slowly but surely the primary field is starting to thin and based on polls that we've seen recently it's becoming increasingly clear that we could see a race between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren because Joe Biden is continuing to plummet um, and it just seems like the race is going to come down to Bernie Sanders versus Elizabeth Warren. Now, if you watch the mainstream media, which you should not, but if you do, there's this underlying assumption that if you support Bernie Sanders over Elizabeth Warren, it must be because you are a uh, sexist. Few pundits will say this explicitly, but this is something that is implied. You know, they try to prime you to think about it in this way, because the idea is, look, if these candidates politically are virtually the same, why would you opt for an old straight white male when you can elect the first woman president. And while I agree that the goal of electing a woman president is important, the number one priority is not gender or identity, it is about the policy substance. And to the chagrin of mainstream news pundits, if this race really does come down to a battle between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, we will make it very clear that Bernie Sanders is different than Elizabeth Warren because they're different with regard to policies. Bernie Sanders is much better when it comes to foreign policy. Elizabeth Warren is, quite frankly, terrible when it comes to foreign policy. But it's not just the policies that differentiate these two candidates. When it comes to just having political courage and politics, Bernie Sanders is much different than Elizabeth Warren because I don't need to rehash what happened in 2016 when she demonstrated to us that she lacks political courage. She's more ideologically aligned with Bernie Sanders, but she didn't endorse him. She waited until the primary was over, and then she was one of Hillary Clinton's biggest cheerleaders. Now, I get that, you know, you're campaigning for Hillary Clinton because you want to defeat Donald Trump, that's fine, but you could have had the candidate be the nominee with your help that would have went on to defeat Donald Trump, but you wanted to be her VP. So you made a political calculation that ended up backfiring and it led to you losing support among progressives. But that's not the only time when she demonstrated that she has no political courage. Uh, when the water protectors at the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation were being assaulted by militarized police, Elizabeth Warren said nothing. She was silent, and she didn't speak up about that until after the issue was pretty much over. So, there's problems with Elizabeth Warren, and one of my biggest issues with her is that she is a quote-unquote team player, where she's made it clear she's committed to the Democratic Party, and she's not an outsider, and, you know, she's not going to blow up the system in the same way that Bernie Sanders will. Now, it's evident that even if the media would like you to believe that Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are the same. There's a very important reason why Third Way is saying a lot of nice things about Elizabeth Warren. There's a reason why Wall Street executives are communicating that, you know, they'd be more open to Elizabeth Warren than Bernie Sanders because they realize that there really is a difference between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. And there's an article from the New York Times that really highlights that key difference. And this is in the way that they campaign and their campaign strategy. Bernie Sanders is relentless in saying, I am with the American people, the forgotten people. He's a real populist, unlike Donald Trump. But Elizabeth Warren, she's saying, I'm with the people, but I'm also with the elites. Because according to this article from the New York Times, here's what she's quietly telling elites in the Democratic Party. As Jonathan Martin of the New York Times reports, this is the overall point she's been trying to make. While her liberal agenda may be further left than some in the Democratic establishment would prefer, she is a team player who is seeking to lead the party, not stage a hostile takeover of it. As Miss Warren steadily rises in the polls, she is working diligently to protect her left flank, lining up with progressives on nearly every issue and trying to defuse potential attacks from supporters of Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. I'm with Bernie, she responds when asked what is perhaps the most contentious issue of the primary race, Medicare for all. Yet publicly, and even more in private, she is signaling to party leaders that, far from wanting to stage a quote political revolution in the fashion of Mr. Sanders, she wants to revive the beleaguered Democratic National Committee and help recapture the Senate while retaining the House in 2020. Miss Warren's wooing could prove important should the nominating process deadlock at the Democratic National Convention 
convention next summer. Many of the officials she is courting are so-called superdelegates who are able to cast a binding vote should the primary go beyond a first ballot. So this is incredibly telling, and this highlights one of the key differences between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. She is a team player who's seeking to lead the party, not stage a hostile takeover of it. Now, a problem with that is the Democratic Party, the DNC, it is fundamentally broken. It's run to the core. So to say that I'm a team player, when your team has been losing, when your team is going down the tubes, when your team is so incompetent, they lost to a fascistic demagogue like Donald Trump. That's not a team that I want to be a part of. That's not a team that I am proud of. To represent. So if you truly were a team player and you wanted to remain committed to this idea that you're a team player, then ideally what you would say is, look, I'm going to lead the team in a new direction, but she's not saying that. And during an interview with Jen Uger of TYT, when the issues with Joe Manchin were brought up, she mounted what she called a quote, spirited defense, unquote, of Joe Manchin. I want to, I want to make a spirited defense. That there are folks like Joe Manchin, he works hard on issues that affect working people in West Virginia. Sure, Dan. So it doesn't matter how horrible the Democrat is, they have a D next to their name, so they matter. They're important, according to Elizabeth Warren. When they're part of the problem, too, the system itself has corrupted both parties. Capitalism, like a virus, has infected both parties. So if you are saying that, you know, I'm all about my team winning and the other team losing, you're missing the point. You're missing the forest for the trees. And that is why Elizabeth Warren is nowhere near as good as Bernie Sanders, because Bernie Sanders is saying... I'm coming in as an outsider, and I'm not going to change the rules of the game. I'm going to blow up the game. So Elizabeth Warren, she doesn't want to do that. She wants to make a few substantial tweaks around the edges, but she doesn't want to fundamentally change the system in the way that Bernie Sanders wants to do it. Because she knows that she can't really fundamentally change the system you know, given the current Democratic Party status quo, if you say we're no longer going to take corporate PAC money, if you say we're going to do Medicare for all regardless if members of the party leadership like it or not, you're basically going to war with your own party. And Bernie Sanders has made it clear that he's willing to do that, whereas Elizabeth Warren is not wanting to do that. She is a team player. And that's the problem that we have with Elizabeth Warren. You're buttering up the elites when Average voters hate them. We don't like the Democratic Party. Most people identify as independents, so we're not on Team Democrat, Elizabeth Warren. Contrary to popular belief, we don't like them, we hate them, and we want you to change the entire system, including the Democratic Party's infrastructure, because they are fundamentally broken, and we want you to be so bold, so progressive, that if somebody doesn't want to change within the Democratic Party, they flee the party, and they join Republicans where they belong, and your response to that is, c'est la vie. But it doesn't seem like Elizabeth Warren wants to do that. And in the event, let's say she were president and she proposed Medicare for all and Democrats like Joe Manchin threatened to leave the party. She is someone who I could honestly see would change that policy and water it down just to make it more appealing to people like Joe Manchin. Because that's the way that she has governed. And that doesn't necessarily mean that she has a bad record, right? Her record is fairly progressive. She has one of the better records. But just in terms of who do you want as president, who do you want fighting for you, the answer is clear. It is Bernie Sanders. Now, here's the thing about her strategy. When it comes to buttering up elites, it does seem like that's actually working. And it may even be giving her the edge over Bernie Sanders. Because individuals within the Democratic Party who should theoretically side with Bernie Sanders or have sided with him before, they're actually opting for Warren this time. So, for example, Raul Grijalva was Bernie Sanders' first congressional endorsement in 2016 when everyone else was lining up behind Hillary Clinton, like good little soldiers, Raul Grijalva said, you know what, I'm going to shun, you know, that Democratic Party orthodoxy and I'm going for Bernie Sanders. But this time he flipped and he did not endorse Bernie Sanders. He endorsed Elizabeth Warren. Deb Holland, who was one of the first two Native American women elected to Congress in 2018, who campaigned as a bold progressive, 
she got elected and then she voted for Pego. And then she recently voted to condemn BDS right alongside corporate Democrats and Republicans. And now she has endorsed Elizabeth Warren. And Deb's endorsement for Elizabeth Warren is actually obviously pretty controversial because Elizabeth Warren embarrassed herself with the DNA test debacle. And not only that, she didn't say a single word while members of Standing Rock Sioux were being brutalized by militarized police, as I brought up earlier. So they were fighting to protect their sovereignty. They were fighting to not allow the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline to violate their rights to clean drinking water. And Elizabeth Warren remains silent. So I understand why Deb Holland's own constituents are saying, wait, really? You're going to endorse Elizabeth Warren? What? So understand, Elizabeth Warren is winning over a lot of party elites because, quote, she is a team player who is seeking to lead the party, not stage a hostile takeover of it. So that's why they like Elizabeth Warren. That's the key difference between her and Bernie Sanders. And it's part of the reason why Elizabeth Warren is not as good as Bernie Sanders, period. Now, besides her attempt to butter up elites, here's what she's also assuring to the establishment because they've been reaping praise on her lately, which is interesting, right? Because if somebody is truly progressive, you should be attacked relentlessly by the establishment. You know, the mainstream news pundits, they should be pouncing on you. You should have third way running attack ads on you, but that's not happening. And it's because Elizabeth Warren has been putting in the work to butter them up. So here's what she's promised them. While Miss Warren has been careful to avoid directly criticizing Miss Mr. Sanders, her regular references to being a capitalist withstanding, she is also quietly taking steps within the party to make clear that she does not want to create a competing power base should she become president. She was one of the first Democratic candidates to sign a pledge circulated last month by the Association of State Democratic Committees vowing not to create any parallel political or organizing infrastructure that would compete with the national or state Democratic parties. The same pledge, which was shared by a Democratic official, also includes a promise to share all of my data collected during the presidential campaign with the DNC and the state parties. The state leaders were trying to ensure that the eventual nominee would turn over his or her fundraising list and any voter file that was compiled for future races. More broadly, they also wanted to ensure that the nominee's political organization is housed within the architecture of the party. So it's clear why this pledge exists. Part of it is probably, you know, Obama's organizing for action, but it's obviously because Bernie Sanders refused to turn over his email list, which we did not want him to turn over his email list because I don't want my email being given to Democratic Party elites who are going to fundraise when they've betrayed me, when they don't represent me. So look, this really is the difference between Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. And I hate to break it to Warren, but while you may be one of the better candidates in this race, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're better than Bernie Sanders or anywhere near Bernie Sanders in the same league as Bernie. Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are very, very different. So if this were just a normal election, if we weren't going up against Donald Trump, if there wasn't this healthcare crisis, if climate change wasn't going to kill us all so soon, I'd say, you know what, Elizabeth Warren is a fine candidate. Her more gradualistic, incrementalist approach, it's going to suffice. But we're not in this time. We need a figure who is going to be transformative, like FDR, like Reagan, but on the left. And Elizabeth Warren has made it crystal clear she is not that transformative figure. She's proposed some great, bold policies. But time and again, she has reiterated I'm on Team Democrat. I'm not going to fundamentally change the system. I'm a capitalist. Bernie's not saying that. Bernie's saying we need a political revolution. And guess what? He's right about that. Because anything short of a political revolution where we change the status quo is not going to cut it. It's just not. We can't have another president who's going to follow the usual legislative process where policy is proposed and then either it's passed and signed into law or it dies in the House or the Senate and then that's that. No, we need someone who's going to be a fighter, who's not just going to fight Mitch McConnell and the Republicans, but who's going to fight their own party, go to war with their colleagues if they don't get on board with these policies like Medicare for All that we need. So Elizabeth Warren, she may be a good candidate, but she is no Bernie Sanders, and we may never get the opportunity to elect a politician like Bernie Sanders 
again, certainly within our lifetimes. And even if she did have the courage to change the system, she's made it clear that that's not what she wants to do. So she may be a solid candidate. She may be a great ally to Bernie Sanders and progressives sometimes, but when it comes to who we should elect as president, we have to have a political revolution. We have to have a figure who's transformative. That's not Elizabeth Warren. This article makes that crystal clear because currently she's buttering up elites when she should be going after them, like Bernie Sanders, when she should be approaching reform from the outside, saying, no, you know what? If you're not with me, then you're against me. Elizabeth Warren is not that kind of a politician. She's a team player. And unfortunately, her team is corrupt and garbage, which is why we have to elect Bernie Sanders. Someone who's going to change the system and make it acceptable to be a team player on the Democratic Party again. Because currently, as they stand now, they are atrocious and they are not representative of the people. Everything that they stand for is against the interests of the American people. It's in favor of the donor class and elites. So that's why you can't be a team player. And anyone who's saying they're going to be a team player, they're essentially telling you that they're not with you. They're with the elites. So listen, I don't like to criticize people who are allied with Bernie Sanders, but unfortunately, we have to be real here. I'm a realist. Elizabeth Warren is no Bernie Sanders.